Hey gardeners, Amy here with Garden Up Landscape and I have with me today Hillary Nickerson with Honeyside Bee Co-op and we're getting my bees today! So tell me a little bit about your business, how sure. you got started and uh, like this is your third year sure. now? Yep. Yeah, third year. So first year was 2020. It was an odd year. I had happened to have a lot of time on my hands like many other people and I really just fell in love with beekeeping and photography. I'm sorry, taking photos of the bees. I just kind of developed a passion for it that summer and living in the city I could only have one hive. And so I reached out to friends and family on a Facebook post and asked if anybody would be interested in hosting a hive for me. Well, the response was unreal. Yeah. I just ran with it. And that winter, I ended up building 25 hives and taking those out to friends and family's houses. Somewhere along the lines, I ended up with like 100 applicants. And so I'm just trying to start fitting in as many as I can. So how the program works is I deliver a hive and I make maintain the hive and in return my hosts get a jar of honey and the experience of beekeeping. I'm mentoring a couple of my hosts. I guess Amy might be one of those who I would say kind of mentoring, just teaching. I'm watching. <laughs> I've always wanted bees, but sure. I don't have time to learn how to be a sure. beekeeper. Sure. And I'm just like, when am I going to do that? Yeah. So this to me, it's like, I have bees, but I don't have to do the work. You're sure. Doing so all that's, the work. Yeah. yay! <laughs> and some, some of my hosts want to become beekeepers on their own. So, and that's awesome. So this is kind of an easy way for them to get into it, learn some tricks, get comfortable with it. Yeah. And really dip their toes in to see if this is even really what they yeah. want. Yeah. Without it's, the huge financial investment. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Beekeeping is... Uh, very expensive. Yeah. So. <laughs> Generally starting out you want two hives which would probably run around 500 bucks. A package of bees which is 200 bucks. I've done the education. I register all the hives so I pay all those fees. Um, I pay the insurance fees. I do. I do. I take care of everything. Yes. Yeah. So. I paid you what? 99. Yeah. 99 dollars yep. for yep. the year. Yep. And I'll continue to pay that every year. Yep. That annual, annual, fee. annual fee. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like have, that a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> and I still get a jar of honey at the end. Yes. Yeah. So as a business person, I'm always wondering, like, how do these businesses work? Sure. So I love interviewing green business owners. How does this work as a business? How do you make money? Sure. Uh, so my host fees cover gas and all the extra kind of time that I spend with communication. An average beekeeper, they just go to a, a site and maintain their bees where I have to communicate via email and text continuously and then also you know zipping around town. I've got hives from Ione actually out to Moran Prairie and then out to Ortis Orchard so I've got a pretty big space. It's a big space it is. to drive. Um, and I am kind of starting to condense more on the northwest side of Spokane. So there's that and then eventually um, this year actually I'll be selling honey. So that's where the so the honey the sales. Gold, yep. Yeah the honey sales are yep. what cover the costs of all these investments, the hives, yep. the bees, and everything else. Yeah. I'll probably start trying to do some wholesale once I have some established. So that's that's the plan. I'll probably, I'm kind of relying on my host network to help sell honey for this first year. I'll have probably 25 hives that are mature that I'll be able to start generating honey from. So whenever that's ready, yeah, I will share your link on my Facebook page. Cool. So make sure to check out both of our socials. I'll link everything below. And then you can follow us. And if you want to order some honey from Hillary, yeah. you can do that. Yeah. Like I was telling Amy, I've been going hard. <laughs> like 12-hour days for probably six or seven weeks. Oh. Just getting everything prepared. You know, you come out of winter um, and just kind of have to yeah. get all the new hives ready and just get everything prepped. Yeah, yeah, because you've been delivering hives. To all yeah, I've been hosts. delivering hives for two days now. And then, so. yeah, the... So and the, also the made so I've and I've bees themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've also been so yeah, you're right. Delivering hives. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then delivering bees. Yeah. But I also have hives from last year that survived, so I've been maintaining those. Yeah. Um, as well. Yeah. So it's pretty constant. Ooh. How many hives did you deliver? Um, this is number thirty. As long as it went tip. this way, that's okay. It okay. actually looks good to me. 
So if the frames are sitting this way, that's okay if they're sitting this way. Right. So this is a full honey frame. I'm gonna turn it this way because what they'll do right away, they'll eat this kind of uncapped stuff probably as soon as I dump them in, they're hungry. So they're gonna go for it. Um, and then the queen, when they release her, she'll be able to start laying eggs in those open spots. Yeah. And so this is something you printed yourself. Yeah. Yep. And so these go over the entrance holes. Yep. On the back side of the entrance holes. And they're so the just... bees can come up through this way. Exactly. Yep. They exit and enter through here. And then so if a yellow jacket flies into the hole, it doesn't know how to operate that. It can't zone. get through there. Yep. Oh, and also clever. eventually the girls will fill this with propolis. So I found just like a tack is really helpful to get this little can of syrup out of the package. And I just kind of shake so all the bees come off. And I let them fly. Some people like to block them. I don't, I don't really care to do that. Yep, and here's your queen cage. I don't know, I don't really know exactly where that's pointing, but she's in there. She's got a yellow dot. Um, it looks like the girls have already acclimated to her. They're trying to feed her. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm gonna remove this cork and replace it with a marshmallow. Yep, it's an easy one for them to chew out, but it gives them, it gives them more time to acclimate to the new queen's pheromones. And it also kind of, it also kind of assures that um, that they have a a few days, day or two, to acclimate to the hive. Yeah. So without that, they could try, decide, oh, we don't like it here, and take off. But they won't do that if their queen is in a cage. So it just kind of gives them, just buys some time. Okay. So now I'm gonna watch and make sure that the queen isn't heading for that exit, and I'm gonna pop the cork and put the marshmallow in. And I'm gonna fold this metal piece. We're gonna have this kind of wrap around the frame right here. Yeah, I think I can see her. We'll just kind of tuck her in here. And this metal piece will spring onto that. So there's going to be a bit of a gap right here. I just don't want to squish the, the girls who are taking care of her. And then for the fun part, pour them out. Yep, just pour them in. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, oh no. Okay, yeah, back up. Sorry. <laughs> Should have put you in a jacket. I'm going to have to s just start making that a thing. Sorry. Okay, so then I'm just going to put that box in there. There's a bunch of like bees that just don't want to make their way out yet yeah. um, so I'm gonna leave the box in the hive with them I'm gonna just kind of put this uh, this can has a little bit of feed left so I'm gonna put it over in here as well so they can finish that off and just mm -hmm. for good measure I'm gonna put a pollen patty in here they may or may not touch it some colonies just don't bother at all mm -hmm. looks like I grabbed the wrong size cover but that's okay We'll get this one on for now and just kind of jump in. So I'm using canvas for an inner cover and I really actually like mm. it a lot. I've been using them now with all my hives. Let me put the lid on. Yeah, they will. And I'm, I'll be, I'm gentle about it. So now what they're going to do is there's going to be a, some bees in here fanning the queen's pheromones out these exit holes yeah. and you'll notice probably within five minutes this cloud of bees they're going to start orienting themselves to the hive and you'll just see all of them they're actually already starting to do it right now um, and they'll figure out how to use these entrances and they'll all just uh, get in there and figure out their new jobs
Yeah, so empty box. All right. Um, it looks like they've actually even kind of gone through and cleaned out the dead ones. Oh, interesting. Uh, still kind of getting a feel for which girls are going to need to be smoked and which aren't. It's my preference not to smoke. Yeah. Um, you know, being that I'm traveling around, traveling with a hot smoker is not fun. Oh, yeah, because that's actually like a fire in a can, it isn't is. it? It is, yeah. <laughs> um, and then also it kind of confuses them and sets them back a day or two. So Ooh. they Because they're just like stoned, basically. Oh, jeez. So. They are bringing in a whole lot of nectar. You can't really see it on that side. I'll show you on this side. Oh, wow. Um, can you see it glistening in there? Yeah. So we've got nectar in these cells and pollen in these cells. Oh, wow. So they mix it all together and... Yeah. <clears throat> um, in their brood chamber they do, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, eventually they'll go just to honey only. Oh, look at all those bees. So, I am seeing... The queen has been released. This is her empty queen cell. They started building what we call burr comb, so that little chunk of comb. Yeah. Um, where we don't really want them to build comb is called burr comb. Or, so they built all that in just a few days. Um, that well, big piece there. this, yeah, that chunk of comb there, yeah. yeah. This frame was already built out. Um, oh, and I see your queen already. <gasps> Yay! So we aren't gonna go any farther. Can you spot her? She has a yellow dot. Oh, yeah! Yeah, I see her right there in the middle. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's all this inspection is for. Is to make sure the queen's out. to make sure out. she's out and she's laying <laughs> eggs. And I actually, I'll show you this side as well. So this is capped brood right here. Um, this kind of patched in stuff. Yeah, so that's, that's larva, baby, yep. or eggs at least at this point. Um, so that's, yep, yeah, uh, pupa in there. Oh, really? Yeah, right, larva, pupa. So they actually, they start capping their brood at around nine days, which actually was yesterday. Oh, yeah? So, um, and this chunk of comb right here, uh, yeah. they started building that because the way I put the queen frame in, I left too big of a gap between, or the queen cage in, I left too big of a gap between the frames. Yeah. And so they started building their own, uh, wow. little chunk which I hate to do it, but I'm going to have to take that off. It just yeah. becomes a nightmare to manage frames with all this burr comb. So I'm just going to... That gonna... is fascinating. So that, they built all that in a week. Yeah. Yep, they sure did. Let's try to be gentle. Um... want to make sure I don't do anything to damage her. Yeah. Oh, I see. The marshmallow fell out. So they released her the day that I put them in. Oh, So wow. that's why there's already capped brood. Oh, okay. I can say it's, it's a little early for that, but they're, they're doing, doing it right. A little bit more burr comb from that those chunks over here. Yeah, I'll smoke these ones um, until the new queen's um, eggs start to hatch. So these bees are going to have the temperament of their previous mother. Okay. Um, but once these new bees start to hatch, they'll have the temperament of the Italian, which is not as uh, aggressive. This is. Um, it's sugar water with oxalic acid, and it's a mite treatment. Oh. So I'm going to put five milliliters down each one of these seams where the, and the bees will track it around the colony. Okay. So that'll be five, ten, fifteen, twenty milliliters um, that I'll put, put in. Okay, so we're just going to do five milliliters down each seam. Um, and so the axilic acid, from my understanding, it crystallizes mm -hmm. on the mites and uh, just kills the mites that way. It, I'm fairly certain I remember it's kind of like diatomaceous earth in that it 
kind of cuts up their exoskeleton. Okay, but it doesn't hurt the bees. No. Yeah. No. So this is my waterer, but the dogs have been getting into it, knocking the rocks out. But so you, I was going to put marbles in it, but I've lost my marbles. Can't find them. <laughs> They're gone. <laughs> And you're saying that marbles may not actually be... Yeah, marbles may not be the best route to go, especially if they're fresh and new and really slick. I had a host put marbles in hers, and I noticed right away that the girls were um, slipping off the marbles. Um, they, you know, they get a little bit wet and slippery, and the girls just slip right off. Thanks so much for watching guys we sure appreciate it both of us have an awesome day remember to subscribe for more gardening and now bee videos and i'll see you in the garden bye <laughs>